We gotta cut the show. Sorry, bro. Fight outside. Huh? We can't. We can't do what it no more. We can't do the show anymore. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel, and welcome to a very special edition of Between the Ropes. Today is November the 23rd, 2014, and it is Survivor Series, the suddenly very important Survivor Series. Of course, this is all barring something not completely going apeshit and it getting shut down because of possible riots in St. Louis, which apparently there is some concern over with the whole Ferguson thing looming. So let's hope that everything stays calm. Let's th that's the first thing. Let's try to... I know that we talk a lot of shit on this show, and uh, you know, in conjunction with like Joe Cronin and everybody, we talk a lot of shit. But the reality is, let's hope that everybody stays safe and uh, things don't get too crazy out there. Now that was the serious part of the show, and I'm glad we're done with that shit because it's time to get wrestling real, baby. All right, so it's Survivor Series, and it's an important one. I think this Survivor Series, in the past four or five days has become so much bigger than it was before that. I mean, this Survivor Series went from nothing to something. This week has been hectic. From the spoiler basically ruining the pay-per-view for some because it was originally reported that the entire Team Cena would get fired, which made no sense. So all but locked up a Cena victory. Turns out that wasn't the case. And it has thrust the pay-per-view into chaos because there is a chance that Team Cena can lose now because perhaps Stephanie's not pregnant. Perhaps there is no real reason for the authority to lose. So maybe Cena's team loses and there's a variety of ways they can do it because of course when even when Cena does lose they will always do their best to protect them. This just feels like one of those situations where something is going to happen or it's just not going to be the status quo. Everybody was getting down on the pay-per-view and the build. And I just have a feeling tonight is going to be utter fucking chaos. It's going to be the night of surprises. I think we are going to see returns, debuts, swerves, uh, just everything. We're going to see so much. So what I want to do is I want to get into the matches first. And then I'm going to get into my surprises. What I think is going to happen throughout the night. There's a lot to get to. So, uh, the, thankfully, there's not a lot of matches to talk about. So, we can get to all the really exciting shit that I think is going to be thrust into it. The Divas Traditional Survivor Series Elimination Tag Team Match, which hopefully will kick off the show. Actually, yeah, I guess it kind of has to. I, I, they could do the Tag Team Championship, which probably is more likely. But I'm going to start with the, in this order. The Divas Traditional Survivor Series Elimination Tag Team Match. Alicia Fox, Natalia. Naomi and Emmy, Emma versus Paige, Cameron, Summer Rae, and Layla. Okay, who gives a shit? Uh, I'm going to say Paige will be the sole survivor. Why not? It doesn't really matter. I don't think it matters much who wins this match. I think what's going to matter is they're going to try to make this important by having a diva return. It's the, it now, I, I said I was going to do the surprises later, but you know what? I guess I'll just roll with them as they come. Here's my first surprise of the night. I think that uh, Eve Torres, who has been in talks with returning, I think she will make a surprise return tonight during this match or after the match. If it's not her, it could be somebody else. It's very possible it could be somebody like, I don't know, Michelle McCool possibly. That's, there's, I know that's unlikely, but there's been talks. What about Karma? She's out there. Mickey James, is she available to come back yet? That's a possibility. There, there are a bunch of people they can bring in, or possibly something a little more exciting, perhaps, the debut of Charlotte. I think any of those things are very likely. So I'm going to get bold. I'm going to get bold. And so not only am I going to call the prediction, but I'm going to, uh, the prediction of the match will being Paige being the sole survivor, but I'm also going to say that there will be a debut or return in the Divas division and it will be a rather big name no matter who it is. So that's something. That, that, would, that could be exciting. The next, the WWE Tag Team Championship Fatal 4-Way. 
I wish this was an elimination match. I, I think that would make the match a little bit better. And it would make more sense with Survivor Series. It wouldn't surprise me if it got changed at some point. Because it just makes more sense. And I think it would be a better match. I'm not a big fan of Fatal 4-Ways. Even less so when it's a tag team Fatal 4-Way. I think, uh, I think the Dust Brothers are going to drop the belts. I think they're going to drop the belts to Miz and Miz Dow because they're riding them pretty hard right now. They're riding them hot because Miz, Miz Dow is so over. And uh, I should give them the belts because that, that could be hilarious and it could build to something in the future. I, I think this is a good way to not only progress the tag team division a little bit and put a little uncertainty into the mix, but also push the storyline of Miz and Miz Dow. Next up is Dean Ambrose versus Bray Wyatt in what could be the the stealer of the show. This could be the matchup that just changes things completely. I think we're also going to have a return in this match because they're not going to want to give away a solid ending, I, I, which I kind of sucks in a way because they just did the same thing with Ambrose's last feud, but I don't think that's over either. Uh, I think they they kind of rock and Austin them, uh, Ambrose and Rollins, and they'll meet again when they're higher up, when they're both main eventers. But Ambrose and Wyatt, this is a feud that can continue. Uh, and they, they got some events coming up that they can continue to let this rivalry build. And a way to add a little bit extra life into it is to have a return. Now, look, my idea for a return is Roman Reigns. If he's ready to come back, why not have him come back? But change him up. Instead of ha having Ambrose be the one to do the Daniel Bryan and end up going to the Wyatts, why not, towards the end of the match, hit Roman Reigns' music, looks like he's coming out to help Ambrose, and he joins Bray Wyatt, turns full fucking heel. He doesn't have to grow a beard and be a disciple, but what, what was happening with Rollins, uh, Reigns was not working. It just wasn't. He was losing momentum as a face. I don't think that's his feature. I think it's more of a rock thing where he has to go bad, like really bad, and eventually the crowd will start to cheer for him just like they did with The Rock. And this is a good way to do that. Have him return and join Bray Wyatt or just attack Dean Ambrose. I, it would make more sense if he joined Bray Wyatt because then they could advance the storyline. Because if he just came in and attacked Dean Ambrose, that would mean they're moving on from the Wyatt and Ambrose feud already. And it's still only like four weeks old. So I don't see that happening. But throwing Reigns into the situation could be very interesting. It's something I'm very interested in seeing. Oh, this could also be the point in the, in the night. and it could, This could be a swerve for everybody as well. Uh, I talked about a night of, of swerves. They could have Sting get involved in this match instead of the main event. Maybe Sting's not coming back to be an authority figure. Maybe he's coming to start building something with Wyatt. Maybe that's the decision that was made. Maybe The Undertaker cannot go. So maybe it will be instead of Undertaker, Sting at, at Mania. It'll be Bray Wyatt and Sting at Mania, which a lot of people were kind of clamoring about. And Wyatt apparently wants that match. So that's something that to look for, a possibility of happening. Uh, just a complete swerve job. and Nobody would see that coming. Uh, seeing Sting come out at that point instead of the main event because I think everyone's expecting him to come out towards the end of the show so that's a good possibility of happening we'll see that, that, I, that one just kind of popped into my head I would like to see that next up AJ Lee versus Nikki Bella for the Divas Championship does this match fucking matter at all? not really I guess if you want to read into what AJ's future is sure it matters but I, I don't know. I, I mean, it, you're not going to be able to get a read whether she wins or loses to Nikki. Obviously, Bree is going to get involved. Yeah, the most obvious thing would be Bree in her last night of servitude costing Nikki the title. However, I see the Bellas reuniting. 
and evilness because that's what they've always been. Look, Brie is not over as a face. She's not. Nobody gives a shit about her yes, yes, yesing. And the more unlikely it looks that Daniel Bryan is coming back anytime soon, the less necessity it is to keep Brie face. There's no point. She's not a good face. She's not intriguing. Nobody gives a shit about her. No one wants to see her in the title picture. Nobody wants to see her as the main diva on the card. So why not put the Bellas back together and, and do what made them popular to begin with? They were evil bitches. They were tawdry. They were very fucking vain. And, and that's what we liked about them. We don't want to see humble Brie, plain Jane. No, we want to see the Bellas. That if we're going to get stuck, it's not that we want to see the Bellas, but if we're going to get stuck with the Bellas, at least let's keep them interesting. And together and being little fucking snarky bitches is what made them interesting. Because this isn't. It's just not. Uh, AJ has carried this feud with Nikki by doing outlandish shit like beating Nikki with a fucking boob. That was great. Or pounding her face against her inflated ass. That was fantastic. The, the biggest story in this match is is AJ possibly leaving. I have kind of done a 180 on this thing. I don't think AJ's going anywhere. I think AJ's staying with the company. There's no reason really for her to leave at this point other than, you know, just being tired of things. But I don't think that's the case. She seems to really love what she's doing. And uh, I, I don't see her going anywhere. Maybe she'll take a little bit of time off. Who knows? This could also be the point in the night where we get a return uh, in the Divas division. I think it's more likely in the other match because there's less going on there. Uh, it, it, and it needs something to carry it a little bit more. In this match, they could do it just for shits and giggles. But sometime tonight, there will be a return in the Divas division or a debut. So look for that to happen earlier rather than later. And my prediction is... AJ Lee wins. AJ wins. That's my prediction. Uh, and Bree... Bree turns. She goes back to being a bad guy, but it's not going to matter. AJ's still going to get the victory. But I think we will see Bree turn on AJ after the match. That's what I think. Bree will attack AJ after the match, and the Bells will reunite, and then they can kind of keep that storyline going. Or maybe Bree gets the next title shot. That's something they can do. So... Oh, by the way, the Dean Ambrose Bray Wyatt, which I don't think I gave a prediction as far as who wins. Uh, I kind of insinuated that there will be some kind of a screw job and a return. So I think it's going to be a no contest since it's just a regular match. It's not no DQ or anything. So I think it's just going to end in a no contest. We're not going to have maybe a disqualification one way or the other. But we're not going to have a decisive uh, verdict in this one. I don't see either one of them going over the other clean. I mean, that would just stunt the growth of either wrestler at this point. Why it can't lose the match because this is the first meaningful uh, pro, uh, you know what I mean the, the most meaningful feud he's been in in a while and you know the last one didn't work out well so he, he can't lose another feud. So, uh, another program, that's what I was looking for. Program. So him losing doesn't make sense. Ambrose losing another feud or at least in the eyes of people losing another feud doesn't make sense so I don't see that happening either that's why I think there has to be a third party getting involved in the match hope that explains that a little bit better sorry for bouncing around there the main event which I think is going to be utter fucking chaos the team authority team Cena team authority consists of Seth Rollins Kane Rusev Mark Henry and Luke Harper Cena, Team Cena is John Cena, Dolph Ziggler, Eric Rowan, Big Show, and Ryback. There is so much to talk about in this match because if Team Cena loses, everybody but Cena gets fired. If the Authority loses, they're out of power. There is a lot going on in this match. And people are like, oh, they're not going to do an angle where they fire those four. Sure they fucking will. And if they do, it'd be goddamn brilliant because it... it it, it parodies what people fucking, it parallels, excuse me, it parallels what people fucking think is going on backstage. Cena holding everybody back. So by Cena losing, which everybody wants, he will actually be holding people back. And then they can do whatever they want. Dolph Ziggler going heel. Ryback going rogue. 
them eventually getting reinstated. There's so many fucking things that they could do. Team Authority coming out the next, you know, the Authority coming out the next night and saying, "You want your jobs? This is how you have to do it." They put them through hell. There's a whole bunch of ways that they can, you know, wash the hand of these guys being fired. They could even have them form a faction after they're fired to, uh, you know, like a a union type of thing. You know, like they remember the old union fucking thing that was stupid. But they could do something like that where they're invading the company. And they, there's a bunch of different things that they can do. I mean, if they wanted to, they won't. But if they wanted to, they could. I still think Team Cena wins. I do believe there is going to be some kind of a screw job. I think there is going to be some kind of a turn. My likely candidate, and I covered this last night a little bit on the SmackDown uh, review show, was Dolph Ziggler. Makes the most sense to me as turning because he lost the Intercontinental title. And usually, historically, when that happens, it's usually because they're being elevated into the card. What better way to elevate him than have him turn on Cena and work a program with Cena? Because Cena needs something to do after this storyline and to get him to Royal Rumble. Dolph Ziggler could be that. So that's something that they could do that would be somewhat interesting and a little bit different because they had a brief feud a while back. Nothing really came of it, so I'd like to see a little bit more of that. I don't really see... Show is not going to turn because that's happened so many times. Ryback's not going to turn because they just flip-flopped the other night. And Rowan it might be the accidental star that came out of this. So really, the only one that makes sense, if there's going to be a turn, would be Dolph Ziggler. Of course, this could be the night that John Cena turns heel. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, it's not. No, it's not. Ever, no. It's not. But they could... If they wanted to, it would be a good night to do it. Something. Here's the point. Something big has to happen tonight. It's a huge night for the WWE because the network is free. Because the pay-per-view is free. This is their chance to turn the tide for the network. This is their chance to make people fucking believe in the product. Something big has to happen. During this match... All fucking chaos could break loose. I think during this match, we will see Randy Orton get involved. He will probably cost Seth Rollins his spot. Maybe even early. Maybe Seth Rollins will be the first one eliminated, and it'll be because of Randy Orton. I, I see that happening. And then they get Orton out of the way. Or Orton's not a big factor in the match, but he does cost Rollins. So whatever happens uh, the next night, you could just go right into Orton and Rollins, which I think is happening anyway. So that kind of makes sense. I think we're going to have him. Vince is going to get involved at some point during this match. Vince always has a plan. Vince is all. These are the type of situations that if Stephanie is indeed pregnant, they have to put Vince into the storyline to gear it up for WrestleMania. This is the night to do it. So Vince being a big, bigger factor in this match than originally, um, you know, assumed would be a big way to boost eyeballs and boost interest so i think that could very easily happen that would be pretty cool roman reigns could return in this match uh, i i doubt it but the biggest thing that is likely to happen and the thing that people are most interested in survivor series about is is this when sting will come back Will he come back during the match? Will he come back after the match? Here's what we know. Both Sting and Orton are officially in St. Louis. That is known. They are there. It is confirmed. They're there. That's a huge thing. That's a huge thing. Sting is there. For those of you who are like tired of, of, of the Sting talk, fucking get real. This is huge. It's historic. Sting in a WWE ring, people. I mean, let your hatred go for a second and just focus on the meaning of this. Sting, the one man who never jumped. The one man who stayed true. I mean, TNA, in a lot of ways, is just a, a an extension of WCW, and he stuck with them. You know, he just went right with them. He's the man who's never eaten the fruit. 
that was there in front of him. He never succumbed to temptation. Well, it's happening. He's going where he belongs. He is going to get the send-off that he deserves, and it starts tonight. And if that's not big, then you need to stop watching the program. If that doesn't get your heart thumping, if that doesn't get your blood racing and boiling and going, then what are you even watching this shit for? What's the point? Because this, things like this, something that you will remember, potentially, this has the potential to be something that you will never forget. Will it? Look, there's a very, I'm not going to lie to you guys. There's a very good chance this falls flat on its fucking face and we're all just like, Jesus fucking Christ. That's a possibility. I am trying with every fiber of my being to shield myself against that. To think, no, this is the night they get it right. This is the night they turn it around. Why? Because I love this industry and I want to see it going on upswing again. And it could start tonight. Mick Foley is another guy that that can show back up tonight. Maybe he's going to be taken over the authority angle or put into the authority angle in some way. There, there, look, here's my surprises, my t- big takeaways for the night. Like I said, I do believe Team Cena will win ultimately and the authority will be out of power. But they're not really going to be because I think Triple H is going to go fucking ape shit, which I love, by the way. The surprises that we will see, and I've covered them throughout this, re, uh, this prediction show. Sting, Orton, Vince McMahon, Roman Reigns, Eve Torres. I also believe that we will see a debut of some kind besides Sting. I, maybe someone from NXT. Uh, there, there's a bunch of guys that are candidates to make their debut. Survivor Series is a place for legendary debuts. It really is. So it would not surprise me at all. If we get a big debut tonight, I believe there will be at least one other non-mentioned debut or return. Something nobody else is talking about. Apparently, that's the plan. The things I'm reading is that they have a lot of surprises lined up for tonight. And they ha- apparently, they have so many surprises that they have one or two backups that they don't even need to use if they feel the crowd has responded well enough to the surprises that they already give. So... That should get you excited. Once again, people, the network is free. This pay-per-view is free. This is the time to swallow the fucking bullshit and watch the show. Because this is it. This is a good opportunity. Rekindle your passion for the product. Maybe this will be the night that does that for you. If you got a little brother, a little sister, a little niece, a little nephew, this is a perfect opportunity to try to bond with them and show them something special because I have a feeling that tonight is going to be big. I, maybe it's just hopeful. Maybe it's just me being a wishful mark. Maybe that's the case. But God damn it, I really want to see something big and I think we're going to get it. And if we don't, I promise there will be an epic meltdown throughout the week from me. I am going to be, tr- oh God, WWE, I am telling you guys, oh, don't fuck this up. Don't fuck this up because I'm your last bastion of support. I am the guy who believes. Don't fuck this up because I will fucking be, oh, I can't even think of the word. I'll be livid. Oh, my God, it'll be elbows and fucking fists flying. Oh, craziness. So I'm, I'm going to be going live right after the show, doing a review on the Joe Cronin show. That should be on Spectrum Gaming 617. I'm excited. I hope you guys are. Tune in. Tell me what you think. Like, comment, subscribe. This channel does not work without you. You guys are the driving force of this channel. So get involved. Tell me what you think. Tweet about it. Let's have some fucking fun with this. This is your guys' event. Let's fucking have some fun. Get involved. Get into it. That's all I got. That's all I got. Joe Croner Show, JCS, Spectrum Gaming 617, right after Survivor Series. Make sure you're there. If you want to uh, listen to some hockey bullshit, some hockey talk, 
some craziness tonight, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I guess this afternoon for you guys, whatever, uh, over on Shopping the Point. Shopping Point Live, Tommy C., Jake Link, and uh, I believe it's Dave Rose doing the news tonight. So there you go. You got that going on. Other than that, Jeff Huffman, I hope you get to Survivor Series. Come on, StubHub. That's all I got. Thanks for joining me. Like, comment, subscribe, share. I'll see you guys tomorrow and later tonight. Bye, bitches. We can't we can't do it no more. We can't do the show anymore. Sorry,